it's really cool in life how certain subjects kind of come up and you hear different people talk about this thing and then somebody else talks about the same thing and you're like, wow, that must be what I'm supposed to be paying attention to. I find that interesting because um, uh, today at uh, Lord of Life, the new pastor, he talked about uh, gatherings and how people gather for events and how God is all about gathering people. That That's what he his uh, ultimate purpose is. Uh, when we fell into sin, he wanted to gather his people back. That's why he sent Jesus to be our Savior. And that big final gathering one day is going to be in heaven. Can you imagine what that's going to be like? I mean, just think, people today all over the United States, all over the world, we're in churches, worshiping Jesus, praising his name. Someday we'll all be doing that together before the throne. I mean, it's a really amazing. And you know, last night, I was watching a sermon by uh, David Jeremiah, and it was really cool because he was talking about heaven, and he was talking about gathering, and I'm like, wow, here we go again with that gathering, and, and when you really think about it, people love to gather, don't they? I mean, we gather at uh, uh, concerts, we gather at uh, uh, to watch a movie together, we gather for picnics, family reunions, we gather at sporting events concerts, all kinds of things that we gather for. And, and some of these things that we gather for, you have to prepare in advance. Like, you can't just go walking into the Super Bowl. What do you got to do to go to the Super Bowl? Well, you got to buy a ticket, right? That's pretty spendy. Um, you got to buy tickets to concerts, okay? whatever it is. Uh, I want to ask you a question, and, and it relates to this passage from Revelation 20. And really intrigued by the whole concept of heaven and what our purpose is here on earth because um, God has placed eternity in our hearts and as Christians our goal is to tell as many people about Jesus I hope you shared this video with people as many people as you can about Jesus and I want you to ask them this question is your name written in that reservation book uh, here you are from uh, Revelation chapter 20 And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. Jumping down to verse 15. Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. It's pretty sad. Can you imagine someday you're going to be reflecting on your life if you're not a believer and you're going to be going, all those people that were telling me about Jesus, all the times that I rejected and said, no, I don't want anything to do with you, God. God's going to say, well, you get your way now for all eternity. I'm sorry your name's not in the reservation book. What a horrible, horrible fate that awaits so many, many people. How do you get your name in the book of life? I mean, if you want to go to a restaurant, a nice restaurant and eat, you make a reservation. They put your name in. You walk in proudly. You go... They go, do you have reservations? And you say, yes, table for four under Dawson. They look, yep, got you right over here, Mr. Dawson. You and your party follow me. Isn't that cool? Oh, I, I, I'm so intrigued by heaven. It's compared to a wedding feast. Okay, you got the finest of wines, the best of meats. Okay, it's going to be a wedding feast. It's compared to a wedding feast. I find this intriguing because I got three weddings that I'm officiating within the next couple months. And the brides and, and especially are so excited about all the little details. The grooms just kind of smile like, yep, the big day's coming. And all the plans that are, uh, it, it's, it's amazing. And in the sermon that I was listening to by David Jeremiah, he told the story of this gal named Ruth Ann. And I looked it up because I wanted to actually see the story. Her name is Ruth Anna Metzger. And I just want to read some of this to you. This is so, man, it just made me like, I got teary-eyed when I was listening to this last night and when I read this last night. She writes, as a, as a professional singer, it was not unusual to be asked to sing for a wedding, but it was a bit unusual to sing for the wedding of a millionaire. I knew the wedding would be picture perfect and was pleased to be able to participate. But when the invitation to the reception arrived, I knew that it was gonna be something exceptional. The reception was held on the top two floors of Seattle's Columbia Tower, the Northwest's tallest skyscraper, 
and it was even more wonderful than I imagined. They were waiters wearing snappy black tuxedos who offered luscious hors d'oeuvres and exotic beverages for the most discriminating taste. The atmosphere was one of grace and sophistication. After about an hour of merriment, the bride and groom approached a beautiful glass and brass staircase that led to the top floor. A satin ribbon, which was draped across the bottom of the stairs, was cut, and the announcement made that the wedding feast was about to begin. Man, isn't this cool? The bride and groom ascended the stairs and the guests followed. What a lavish event of which to be part. A gentleman with a lovely bound book greeted us as we reached the top of the stairs. May I have your name, please? I am Ruth Anna Mesker, and this is my husband, Roy, I replied. The gentleman opened the book and searched the M's. The gentleman searched the M's. I'm not finding it. Would you spell it, please? I spelled it slowly and clearly. After searching throughout the book, the gentleman looked up and said, I'm sorry, but your name is not here. Without your name in this book, you cannot attend this banquet. Oh, there must be some mistake, I replied. I am the singer. I sang for this wedding. The gentleman calmly answered, It doesn't matter who you are or what you did. Without your name in the book, you cannot attend this banquet. As I looked around the room, I thought briefly of running to the groom and trying to plead my case. But with a hundred guests on the stairs behind us and every place at the table assigned according to the thoughtful choices of the bride and groom, I stood silent. The gentleman with the book motioned to a waiter and said, show these people to the service elevator, please. They got in there. I'm not gonna read the rest. If you wanna look it up, you can. Ruth Ann Metzger, just type in uh, story of soloist trying to get into reception and you'll find the rest of it. But it's really interesting because they got led to the elevator and he pushed the G button, ground, down. What a sad day it's going to be on that last day when many people say, but Lord, I did this. But Lord, I was a decent person. It doesn't matter what you did. If your name is not written in the book of life, you cannot come to the wedding banquet. And they will be escorted. As David Jeremiah said in his sermon, even below ground level. What a horrible, horrible thing. Man, I, you read that story and it's just like, can you imagine how she felt? And when they got in the car, the, the article goes on to say, this is a true story. The article got went on to say, the husband's like, honey, they were just quiet for like five minutes after they left. And he finally just said to his wife, what happened? You know what she said? We got so busy with life. I actually forgot to send in the RSVP that came in the mail. I just figured with me being the soloist, it was okay. But you had to have an RSVP. Wow. Is your name written in the book of life? What are you waiting for? How do you, how do you get it in there? It's not by what you do, how well you sing, how well you don't sing, <laughs> what, 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 who you serve, who you don't serve. I mean, it's, it's not about any of that. It's by believing that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. I can't make you believe that. God's Holy Spirit has to work in your life in order for that to happen. And I'm praying right now for all those who are listening to this, that if you truly care about people's eternity, that you will share this video with them and you will say, look it, it's real simple. God's Spirit is working in you now to RSVP. I want to be in heaven, Lord. And I know that I failed you in so many ways. I know it's not about the good things I've done. There's so many good things that I haven't done that I should have done. People, let's stop living as if this is all there is. When David Jeremiah was describing heaven, according to the scriptures, it was so great. He said, if we truly, truly fathomed it, we would quit focusing so much on this life. We try to create heaven on earth because God created that yearning in us for paradise. And people look for it in all the wrong places. And it always leaves us empty. We have heaven to look forward to. And we need to share that with people. Heaven. I want to go there. You? It's real simple. Lord, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for choosing me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I want to be in heaven with you. 
by your grace, would you write my name in the book of life? Just think, someday, like going to that restaurant, you can proudly stand at the gate. Why should I let you into my heaven? Table for one, John Dawson. You died for me, Jesus. You're my savior. I have a reservation. My name is written in the book of life and by grace, ah, yes, here you are. And boy, it's gonna top even that millionaire reception. We will be so wowed. It will take an eternity to actually grasp it all and enjoy it all and take it in. Let's share this message with folks. Okay, let's get out there. If you really love the Lord, you really want to have purpose, let's do what we can to make sure people know this message so that they don't have to go in the elevator where they will be put in there and the button G down will be pushed for them for all eternity. Share the good news. Get your name in the book of life. By God's grace, by his Holy Spirit, I pray who's ever listening to this, the Holy Spirit would work in them and that they would receive eternal life and have their name written right now in the book of life, Lord. This is Pastor John from 15.5 Ministries. You have a great day.